Our next guest is a talented actress you know from films such as The Age of Innocence and the Harry Potter franchise, as well as the PBS series Call the Midwife, her memoir, This Much is True, is available now. Please welcome to the show, Miriam Margulies. Hello, Miriam, how are you? Hello, Mr. Myers, nice to meet you. It is lovely to meet you as well. I want to admit that I have sort of fallen in love with you, not just for your work in film and television, but I think you're one of the finest talk show guests I've ever seen on Graham Norton's show. So I feel as though uh, he, you are on loan from the Graham Norton Library, and we appreciate it. Thank you for having me. He's a delightful gentleman. And I always enjoy going on his shows, but I never know what I'm going to say. And I have no idea what I'm going to say on your show. We would expect nothing less from you. <laughs> <laughs> so now this is a book uh, that you uh, wrote last year uh, when you were in Italy. And what made you decide at this point in your life to write a memoir like this? The main reason was because the publishers approached me with a great deal of money. Okay. And when you get to 80, you, you don't know whether you're going to live much longer and you might need carers, and mm -hmm. carers cost money. So I thought, it's um, a good opportunity. And I never wanted to write a book because if you tell the truth, you hurt people and I don't like hurting people. And I'm not interested in celebrities and talking gossip. That, that is not what I like. I like real life, and that's what I hope I put into my book. But I put myself as well, because that, that was the deal. And um, so far, it's, it seems popular, selling well, which is what interests me and the <laughs> publishers. And I'm just astonished to be on an American program. I, I'm because it's not on sale in America yet. It it comes on sale in in May, and when I will be eighty one. Uh, here's how not on sale it is. We had this is a pretend book. This is not your actual book. We. <laughs> um, all right. So I have another question for you. Did you find it easy to write? Let me tell you the way we did it because it's rather clever. We did it via Zoom as we are doing now, and the publisher. The editor, that is, asked me lots and lots of questions. I did about 40 interviews. And then they had it transcribed by a typist. They sent me the transcription, and I worked from that. So nobody wrote it for me. I wouldn't have any ghostwriters. I want it to be my authentic voice. And it is. And that's how I did it, because I can't remember things that happened 40, 50, 60 years ago. You know, they all concertina. You can't remember things. But I've had a full and interesting life, and I've enjoyed it very much. As, I've, as I said in my introduction, I've, I've slept with a curious variety of humans, and that sort of thing is always of interest. I also... And I'm a, I'm a, vol a voluble left-wing lesbian, and um, I just tell it like it is. That's what I want to do anyway. I have read a tale that you maybe were one of the first people in England to say a certain word that you're not allowed to say on television. I regret to say that is true. It was in University Challenge, a quiz show for students, and I got an answer wrong. And of course, the expletive popped out of my mouth as it would almost anybody's, I think. But unfortunately, the cameras were on me, so it was a, a clear indication that I was saying, and they beat it out. And um, there it is. It's not a distinction I'm, I'm fond of, but it did happen. Well, you've more than made up for it in the years uh, since. Um, there's a wonderful story, and there are many wonderful stories about people you've met over the years, but you had an interaction with the Queen that <laughs> may, is it safe to say if the Queen wrote a book, you might not make it into hers? No, and I think she would be right to om omit me. <laughs> because I was very silly. It was British Book Week. Lots of people connected with the book trade uh, were invited to Buckingham Palace. I was invited because I record books. And I wanted to meet the Queen, and I asked how, how you get to see her, because she was mingling with the crowd. And the equerry said, uh, well, you, you just um, form a semicircle and smile, and she'll, if she sees you, she'll probably come towards you and, and have a, a conversation. So... It's not easy to form a semicircle on your own, even when you're a rotund person, as I am. But I found a friend, and we semicircled, and we 
put our faces into a, a rictus of a smile. <laughs> and Her Majesty saw us, and amazingly, she came towards me and she said, as she often does, you know, and what do you do? And instead of saying, Mom, I record books, I said, and I, I cringe as I tell you, uh, Mom, I am the best reader of stories in the whole world. <laughs> And Her Majesty, quite understandably, recoiled, uh, took a deep breath, raised her eyes to heaven and smartly moved to the next person. And she said to him, and what do you do? And he said, Mom, I record. Um, well, he, he wasn't a recorder, actually. He said, I teach children to read. And we found that if the letters are in different colours, it absorbs uh, the information is, is absorbed by the children more quickly and easily. I, standing next to him, said, my goodness, how fantastic, I didn't know that. And Her Majesty, incensed at my interruption, turned back to me and said, be quiet. <laughs> the tea was very crisp. And instead of being quiet, I said, oh, my goodness, Your Majesty, I'm so sorry, I was carried away with excitement. And she again raised her eyes to heaven moved slightly away, started talking about something else. I then interrupted her and said, you see, Your Majesty, we are so lucky to have English as our language. We have Dickens, Keats, Shakespeare, Wordsworth. And I went through the syllabus and I could see from her expression, it was slightly glazing over with terror, probably. I said, imagine, for example, Your Majesty, if we had been born and I was searching for a, a nation with a small literature and I came across... Albanian. <laughs> and at that, she really did take fright, clutched her handbag to her and tottered off, muttering, yes, yes, <laughs> got away from me as fast as she could. So I, I'm ashamed of the incident, but now I like telling the story because I look such a complete idiot. Now, we don't have a queen in America, but the closest thing we have might be Dolly Parton, who you also were lucky enough to meet. I believe with Graham Norton. Yes, I, I love Dolly Parton. I think she's absolutely the best sort of American. And um, I, I got, because I, I was in Wicked on Broadway, the only time I've been on Broadway was in Wicked, and Joe Mantello was directing, and he directed her in something, and so when I... I asked him, can you get me a seat for her concert? And he got me two seats. And I asked Graham to come with me. And we were, we were going to meet her afterwards. There's a sort of, it's called meet and greet. You probably know that, but I'd never heard of it before. But anyway, we were queuing in the great tunnel underneath Wembley Stadium that leads to her dressing room. And I could feel this, this fart <laughs> building and crescendoing inside me. And I was holding on to it as hard as I could. But finally, I just had to let it go. You know, sometimes that happens. Yeah. And I let it go. And it was the longest, loudest, not smelly, but very powerful fart. It, it stopped everybody in their tracks. I was incredibly embarrassed. Graham was was reeling in shock. But eventually we got to see Dolly and that was what counted. <laughs> she didn't know about it. Uh, it is, uh, your book is filled uh, with wonderful <laughs> and incredibly colorfully told stories like this. Congratulations on writing it. And thank you so much for making time for us today, Miriam. What a sweetie you are. Thanks for having me. This Much Is True is on sale now wherever you buy your books, but please support local and independent bookstores. We'll